In the last installment of Games on Scratch, I looked at reimaginings of Minecraft. But today, I'm feeling the need to get a bit... spooky. But when I searched Five Nights at Freddy's, or even just FNAF with the search bar on Scratch, there weren't any results. But then I looked it up on Google, and I found Five Nights at Scratch under Studios. And that's where I found all these games. Cause today, I'll be taking a look at FNAF on Scratch. The first game we'll be looking at is Five Nights at Spring Bear 2. Oh sh! Spring Bear is having a seizure! Someone help him! After seeing a newspaper that looks like it came straight from a terror thumbnail, we find ourselves in the office, which was based off of the one from FNAF 2. Here we have every single animatronic instantly killing us at once, but I guess it must have all been a dream because the guard we're playing as just continues with his day. The formula for this game is nothing to write home about. In this game, we need to prevent these three bear guys from coming into your office and, uh, doing this. We can avoid this by wearing a mask. To keep you from winning the game by hiding in your office the whole time, there's some sort of battery thing that you have to recharge before it runs out. Sounds a bit familiar. If you fail to do so, then you'll get a visit from this guy. If you're wondering, yes, that does appear to be a chip. There's a glitch where the background of the office just kind of disappears. There isn't anything else to say about that, I just wanted to point it out. Everything here works perfectly fine, but you can't click the bear's nose, so... THIS GAME SUCKS! After beating the knight, I was put back on night one, but then when I restarted the game, I was all of a sudden at night four. Who the hell are you? Overall, Five Nights at Spring Bear 2 is a bit too buggy for my liking. However, it's not terrible, and it doesn't do anything criminally wrong. On to the next one. Next up is Three Nights at Gamers. In this game, you need to fend off the evil gamers that are trying to get you! The office was designed really well, with the only way for the animatronics to get to you being that giant vent and the flashlight effect surrounding the mouse was definitely a nice touch. So the night starts in your usual way. You get a phone call from some guy. He explains that the game we're playing is absolutely not a FNAF clone. We just survive, um, lol. Bye. Wait, was that Discord? I guess we really do be playing three nights at Gamers. The gameplay loop revolves around finding the perfect time to close the vent door, as the various characters try to get through the vent, and obviously you have to stop that from happening. The animatronics in question are a shark, a gamer, and a, oh no, female gamer. No! No! If an enemy gets through the vent, this happens. Jeez? absolutely terrifying. You don't need to worry about that very much though, because I'm not sure if there's any punishment, we're just keeping the vent closed forever. There's also a glitch where you can see the cameras in the office at the same time. It doesn't really change the gameplay, but it's fun to look at. Overall, Three Nights at Gamers is short, but silly. Here we got Five Nights at Jackson's? Yo, what is up guys? It is me, GamerGod99 here, and in today's video, let's play some Five Nights at Jackson. <laughs> so this is Five Nights at Jackson's. You better look out. This game is actually pretty well made. Outside of the intro cutscene, you need to spend five nights in Jackson's Family Diner. Also, some of the cameras have shading, while others don't. In the beginning of Night 1, you only have to deal with Jackson himself, and he moves really slowly. So a lot of the footage you'll see is just me doing this. Whenever you try to shut the doors, it takes a good few seconds for you to be able to do anything else. And that's really the jankiest part of the game. Besides that, everything here feels pretty good. Later on, Jackson disappears and gets replaced by GOLDEN JACKSON! Oh no. And he kinda just didn't do anything. But after a while, regular Jackson came back out of nowhere and killed me. I literally checked every camera over and over again to see if he's moved and he wasn't anywhere. I guess that's supposed to be a cue to close the doors, but whatever. Oh well, at least the jump scares have some actual movement. ESTR One Night Beta is the next game we'll be playing. Oh thank god it's the official one! I was real scared for a moment. In this game, you have to watch this bunny guy as he stands idle on one of the cameras. There really aren't any original mechanics in this game. You can flash the hall to scare off any unwanted guests, you can put on a mask, and you can look at a whole three different cameras. The first one has the bunny. I'll assume he's called the Esther Bunny. I mean, his name's technically Bun Bun, but wouldn't Esther just be more fun? And he appears to be climbing out of some sort of wooded vent. The second camera is empty. 
and the third camera just has a black box covered in blood. Nice. Esther's design is actually really well done. It's still made in scratch, so it's not gonna make you shit your pants just by looking at it, but it kinda reminds me of Bond from The Walton Files. Something I noticed is that time doesn't move. At first I thought the nights were just really really long, but upon further inspection I realized that the clock actually resets if you close the cameras. Not like it really matters though, as there's no power and Esther doesn't move anyways. And even if he was able to, you could always just use the mask and flashlight while the cameras are up. The game's in beta, so I can forgive some of this, but it looks like it's gonna be pretty cool once it's actually finished. Next up, we have a remake of the original game. Now this is Five Nights at Freddy's, but remake. FNAF on scratch, if you will. It copies pretty much everything, including the custom night game mode. The biggest difference between versions is that you can disable jump scares. The cameras look a bit crustier than usual, and they even went as far as to add Golden Freddy. It isn't anywhere near as rare in this game. I know, because I got him five times, but it's still really cool to see him either way. There isn't too much to talk about here because there aren't any original mechanics, but it was still really well made. And I recommend checking this out if you're A, too poor to afford Five Nights at Freddy's, or B, just want to play FNAF on Scratch. The next one is One Nights at Minecraft's. TWO! <laughs> So here we are in the uh, Minecraft pizzeria. There are five enemies in One Night at Minecraft, those being Steve, 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 you get the point. There's little to no variety when it comes to enemies. And even though there's a left vent and a hallway you can flash your light on, it doesn't really matter since the only way you're able to be under attack is when one of the Steves go into the right vent and the right vent alone. And then you close the door and they're gone. If one of the Steves can get into your office, then this happens. Yeah, this game's just really repetitive all in all. And I mean, if you like Minecraft, Feel free to try it. Lastly, we got UCN, my edition. This is a reimagining of Ultimate Custom Night, but with the characters from Baldi's Basics. As you can see with the UI, the game wasn't exactly designed well, so obviously, this being a custom night, the first thing I did was put all of them on 20 and see what happened. The game never actually tells you what each of the characters do, so the best you could do is turn it on and figure out how to deal with them. Well, that method works fine for the usual FNAF games, in a custom night there's too many characters at once to keep track of, so there better be some descriptions. And again, in this game there isn't. So here's what I learned. This sock guy is the most annoying thing you've ever seen. You have to click it before it destroys your ears with its screech that could be heard from 10,000 miles away. Ninetales has you putting on the mask, and uh... That's about it, I really couldn't figure out any of the other ones. Camping Baldi just kind of went to my room and never left. The layout of the game isn't crazy well made either, which makes it even more confusing as to what's going on. And because of that, I don't really recommend this one either. Especially when you think and realize that Ultimate Custom Night's free. And one last thing, it was a serious missed opportunity to not call the game UCN My Edition. Oh my God. You know, because it's Baldi from Baldi. But yeah, that was FNAF on Scratch. The games on Scratch obviously fall more under fan games than ripoffs, and in the end they're harmless anyways, so there's no fault in making or playing any of these. And yeah, that's it for today's video. I highly recommend watching the first installment of this series because it gives a deeper explanation as to what Scratch is all about. Goodbye.